I do some poems for a living. I'm running for SGA president. You know I want to be the president for SGA. A good candidate for the secretary position. I'm currently running for vice president of SGA. And I'm campaigning to be the marketing coordinator. But no, so I read this poem about somebody like going back and forth, back and forth, and you know, it's just kind of like, uh, when will this all make sense? So, there's only but one truth. One plus one will always equal two, and remembering that math was never really my strong suit, I'm wondering what is the equation that will get me back together with you? Okay, oh, y'all here. <laughs> so if one plus one equals two, now divide that by one and we're still whole, but I kind of feel one too. So we split by another divide, and two and one are by each other's side, and love is a new transition, so two over one become a transposition, that's half. Half of what we used to be. Fighting now incessantly and I'm still troubled by the math and I'm trying to make this right, looking for some sort of sign, a cosine, but I'm going off into a tangent. There's a test coming up soon and I don't think we can withstand it and if we briefly change subjects to our history, statistically it is proven that we will fail miserably. Now I've never really been good at topology, so if I'm wrong, please correct me, but are we doomed to be warped like the Mobius trip indefinitely? No beginning nor ending in sight, just fighting to an infinity. Einstein said, don't worry about your difficulties in math, I assure you mine are greater. But trying to solve our problems is like figuring calculus with no calculator and seeing that we save the most difficult problems to solve for later, what once was less than now has a sign of becoming greater. And even Pythagoras couldn't help us solve them because if I'm A and you're B, we still can't see the square root of our problems and I'm trying to solve them looking for some sort of right angle 90 degrees. Can we go back to 180 please? But no, we always do a 360. And I'm troubled by the circle of events because the same things we seem to circumvent, never solving the problem completely, only letting it grow exponentially. Now, where were we? One half is 0.5, that's a percent of 50. Just 50%. Both of us wanting 100, but neither of us giving it. And now that you're gone, 50% times nothing is zero. And if we could just exchange our chromosomes and replace them with binomials, you and I could become X and Y. But even in your absence, I'm still wondering what comes next. Looking at this, it can't be right, because I'm still problem solving for an X. Thank you. So um, I was saying that my grandmother was one of the founding administrators for this campus, the HCC Ebor campus. Uh, my mother worked here in the 1980s also uh, in administration. And uh, I didn't go to HCC, but I spent a lot of time in the, the hallways and, and playing and even sleeping under my mom's desk sometimes. So I've been around here a lot. Uh, it wasn't really a, a conscious choice. It sort of was a, like a, a impulse I followed. Um, my mom's a theater person. I grew up in performing arts uh, around musicians, actors, poets. And uh, it sort of was something that I, I rejected at first. I would sit in the corner and read my comic books or try to play my Game Boy. But uh, without fail, everything was still getting in, right? Getting into my head and getting into my heart. So um, the first time I touched an instrument, I was 15, though. So you know how normally kids see drums. Like if I put a conga somewhere, everybody goes by and they want to hit it. or Everybody figures, oh, I want to bang that drum. I didn't even know what the skin felt like until I was 15. But I had been listening long enough, and I had been paying close enough attention that things came at a really fast rate. And uh, haven't looked back, can't look back, you know, so. can be without those who come before us. And that's not symbolic. I mean, the hands you got, the face you see in the mirror, it's all some combination of your ancestors, right? So this one will do for that very reason. Come, Hator El Shaddai, she fed and saved him. Abram into Abraham, she named him. Free revision, circumcision, black the land of Nile, baptism cleansed him. Wrap white linen, cause in the end everything just like the beginning. 
the almond, the ashe, the hit, the power, the second, the minute, the hour. Overstanding what's been written. KRST to great commission. God fell from mystery. The ears to hear, the eyes to see, the tongue confess the history. The blessed be the Lord I am, and blessed be the nation of Ham. Call your ancestors, call your ancestors every day. Speak your ancestors' glories, oh yes, and give them praise. Oh Lord, call your ancestors, honor your ancestors every day. Nah, nah. Ifa, Afa, divine divination, Bodun and Orisha's foundation. Nyame, Akan, Yonko Pone, rested on the Sabbath, connected with Obo Song. Enri Kingdom, known as Ebo, seven times reincarnated from the ego. These mighty Africans, defiant Africans, they were known as flying Africans. No fear, they fly, yo, chose death over serving Oyinbo. Ebo landing, walked on water, the self-sacrificing son and the daughter. Congo, Ndongo, Matamba, Nkisi Christian before the Mayflower. Many men they did good deeds, prayed on beads, calling on Allah for peace and power. Rooted in the African soil, revelation rooted in the African toil, African gold, African lives, building the world, admitting the sick and healing the blind, the sacred divine. Modern world couldn't survive without the wealth and the product of the African mind. Open your heart so you can see the do or do not to try. Never say no, never die. Call your ancestors, call your ancestors, call your ancestors, call them by their name, call them by their name, call them by their name. Call them by their name, call them by their name. Call your ancestors by name. Yeah? Poets are very, very terrible people. With the exception of myself, I'm perfect. <laughs> and I'm very humble, it's, it's one of my many, many great qualities. Um, there's so many though. Uh, but no, poets are, are very terrible people and I was friends with these two poets. They, uh, one was going through a really rough time because he was like, you know, facing five years in prison for child endangerment. <laughs> All right, um, I'll put a dollar on the commissary, but I'm never talking to you again. And another one, she was going through a really time, rough time financially and so I would like sneaker money, you know, I would buy her groceries and, you know, like really help her out or whatever and I, you know, like pass her a couple of dollars. And so, Somehow, she got this crazy idea that I was talking about her behind her back, but I wasn't because, like I said, she owed me money, <laughs> and it's never smart to talk about somebody who owes you money until you get your money back. <laughs> and so uh, she wrote a poem about me, and then like poetry, we were like, oh, wow, that's a duel, you know what I'm saying? And so, of course, it wasn't nearly as good as anything I wrote. Um, and so, I kid you not, in the beginning of her poem, it started out, she was like, when you sit down at my table, and you break bread with me, I consider you family. And I was like, bitch, I bought that bread. This is crazy. <laughs> and so, um, like, that's like literally, I'm like, I know, this ain't who I think it is. Um, so I, like, yeah, so I was like, oh, okay, bet. Oh, we got form. <laughs> okay, girl. So I wrote this poem um, about both situations. Uh, and don't worry, they've, they've made nothing of their lives. It's fine. Uh, it's fine. So, yeah. The lexicons of the relationships that shape us like octagons never read stop and watch your inner circle. Who will pretend to be a bunch of squares and only trying to box you in. They'll be untimely undoing in the end because laughter is always harder the farther it is from your face. And honesty was lost with the crayon box that told you that the only thing stopping you was your imagination, not your association. Guilty parties part with filthy hands parting, asking for forgiveness and forgiving another handout. Hands out of pockets are the most Welcome off hands across the face are the most received. These same hands covered my eyes trying to deceive me. Keep your friends close, but dispose of those who consort with your enemies. I loved real hard when I was hardly loved. It's my fault. I can't blame anyone for my bad taste. The bad taste in my mouth found out that I was laughed and talked about, but it's okay because I'm the one who put myself on display. Send a stage so I could be aimed at. It's a shame that even when they hit me, they don't know they're doing themselves in because friends are nothing without each other. 
These knees weren't used for praying nearly as much as they were holding and supporting these legs up that would walk a thousand miles for another. Guess that's why you've forsaken me. Feet blistered so I would mistakenly dare ask you to walk at least one in my shoes. I'd rather buy you a new pair. But you probably stare me in my eyes and kick me when I'm down with them. And now we are no longer down for each other. The scale of amicability when friends split vary as much as the lies that in it. So it's okay if you talk about me behind my back. Just tell the truth. Tell them all the things that I did for you. Tell them that positivity surrounded all of my actions and that negative ions had an eye on everything I tried to become. Take all your false charges, add them together, and we are still left polarized because you can't attract positivity with lies. Too bad you can't look me in my eyes when you stab me in the back. Because I loved you like a, no, we were better than that. Or at least I thought so. Or maybe I just thought slow and not at all, so it's wrong for me to call you thoughtless when really it's my fault this situation happened in the first place. And now I find myself trying to rebuke your fake public hugs and kisses, not the attempt of being hostile. It's just that Judas was my least favorite apostle. It's possible that one of us forgot the adage, don't bite the hand that feeds you. It's no wonder my hands have been so abused that the numbness makes them feel bouncy. I held you down and you held me under. They say the true scale of a friend is one who will stick around when situations get thick. Well, you got thin, became non-existent and disappeared, but I should have held myself in higher esteem. See, just because you hang around the same people doesn't make them your peers. So it's my fault. I'm the one to blame for sometimes having bad taste in friends. Because see, friends and foes start with the same letter, and they both can F you in the end. Thank you. Because we're powerful beings. We're powerful beings of all of the elements that are on the periodic table. Stardust and stories made into living beings, right? Sunlight and gold. So that's what this one is about. Don't let them get you with the pro wrestling slaps. <laughs> They cannot control the power that we hold. Sunlight and gold, we glow, we glow, we glow. We glow, we glow, we glow. Take a minute, it's power in it. Take a breath, be infinite. like this <sighs> reveal just like that the life and death in every single breath is universal law and never gonna stop cycle the winter's end when spring has come we're born again around the world there are reflections of our natural essence and the truth is plain to see resurrected light the change from day to night the breath of life exchanging with the tree Since ancestors they return as children over again, how many times has this world that we live in already been? The life and death in every single breath is universal law and never gonna stop. Take a minute. 
power in it. Take a minute, take a minute, take a minute. The infinite. 